Giuseppe works uh, between Italy, United States and uh, UK, right? UK also, yeah. And UK also because he's affiliated with Yale University, but he owns a company in the UK, actually two companies, if yeah. I understand correctly. Mm -hmm. And uh, one of the companies is, most, is mostly devoted to education, education say. Yeah. so you give courses. Most of the courses are about computing and uh, GIS, uh, Python, and all that. Uh, so with these tools, Giuseppe developed this uh, global uh, global uh, stream network and basing basing uh, data set uh, with uh, Merit 90 meters. And you're going to talk about this today, right? Perfect. Yeah. Okay. Perfect. Yeah. Thank you very much, Massimiliano, for the nice introduction, and thank you all of you for coming to this uh, seminar. Uh, let's jump in immediately to the topic, and then I will say a bit more about myself. So why we need uh, information about water and stream network and water related? We know <laughs> everything about straight and how much car holes are coming in each moment. The Google map, everybody uses it with the tra traffic information and so on. But when we come to the water, we still have issues understanding where it is, when it is how the pattern, the global pattern, and also local pattern. That's why I came uh, to, uh, to, to build up a data set globally available with a standardized uh, procedure that is allowed cross, cross comparison uh, among the different boundary and so on. And uh, the hydrography 90 meter uh, was, a, was a work accomplished in the last three years with all the authors, mainly from Germany, uh, Yale University, and also from the spatial ecology. Uh, company. I have a background in, uh, in forestry, and then I developing a guest passionate about coding in Linux, and now I'm coding all day long. And I was able to go inside to the we will be able to go inside to the methodology and understanding why pushing the boundary of computational hydrology was important to achieve such a kind of data set. Uh, so um, the talk in general will be. Um, Driving the theoretical background of what we need to network something probably somebody already knows, and I will go deep inside to the methodology and the data processing. Over here, we will have fun in understanding how the, the full process is taking in, in, in process. We will see the, the validation procedure of this data set in terms of flow accumulation and also location of the stream network. And we'll see the computational process that such a data set requires in order to, to be able to be accomplished. We'll come to the conclusion with some knowledge transfer, how I transfer this knowledge in, in massive data coding uh, processing. So theoretical background. Um, as you know, uh, digital elevation model can be um, covering uh, digital surface model, digital terrain model. I will talk uh, briefly about the flow direction and flow accumulation algorithm that already exists, and I will see the stream network and the basin delineation. So let's go uh, understand the background. So you know the, uh, the digital elevation model can be generated by radar sensor, or by nowadays also LiDAR sensor that is able to penetrate through the canopy cover, and we can, we can get digital terrain model, digital surface model. So the sensor are able to capture uh, the surface model, uh, but then what we really need for hydrology is the terrain model, okay? So there are different techniques that have been used to remove, especially forestry and also building in the, uh, in the height of the building, the height of the forest from the, ter the, from the terrain surface model in order to get uh, the, the terrain model. Then there are also in the computation, in the computation of in the dam, in the raw mat in the raw data of the dam, there are also different kind of errors like speckled noise. So you can see stripe, a stripe that uh, they can be eventually corrected the type with the adaptive smoothing filter, or different kind of also uh, speckled noise, or also absolute bias due to um, difference with the altimetry. Okay. Uh, so this kind of uh, error has been uh, in the 2017 has been uh, mapped has been corrected by Dayai Damazaki releasing the Merit Dam, and the Merit Dam so far 
is uh, the most available uh, resources with error correction free. Or okay, most of the errors have been corrected. There are still some, but it's so far the best one. And two years later, he derived also the merit hydro, that is the digital innovation model um, adjusted with the hydrological adjusted with hydrological uh, characteristics. So by using this one, I was I mapped it at the stream network at the global level. So let's see a bit about the, the theoretical background of the how, how we map rivers. So this is the typical, uh, you can calculate based on the slope, you can calculate the flow direction, and later on you can see, you can accumulate downstream how much pixel, how many, the, the amount of area, and you get the so-called flow accumulation. By thresholding the flow accumulation, you can identify the stream river. So in other words, you are checking where the flow is going and that is going toward down to the valley and you can have tracing the, uh, the stream network. And of course, you can have the full stream network if you think that you do the same operation for all over the cell, all over the globe. Uh, there are different methods of how to calculate the flow, accumula uh, flow accumulation. Um, one, uh, there are two, the single flow and the multi-flow. The single flow identify only one cell will get the water, so you can see only uh, one, cell, one row go to the other row, or you can see the multi-flow where you have a splitting of the quantity of water towards different cell. So uh, through the years have been, um, uh, they've been using several algorithms. At global level has been used all, only the single flow direction in the eight cell or directly to one cell directly, and, uh, and nobody was using the multi-flow at global context. So all these techniques, they were very well known and has been applied always or one kilometer resolution or just for some, some country or some little state. Uh, so we concentrate uh, we concentrate in this one in Ombergren also because it's been also is, has been, there is a, an algorithm directly implemented inside RAS. Um, in terms of methodology and data processing. <coughs> so uh, we will see a bit the hydrography terminology. So what does it mean uh, and how we can use the terminology to understand the big amount of data that we create. And we will, we will see the different tile system they are implemented for irregular tile system. And regular tile system, we will see what does it mean. We will see the computational workflow flow and we will see the final product in terms of global basin, subcatchment, and steam product. So let's see a bit about the, um, the terminology in the hydrography 90 meter. This is the typical situation of representation of a uh, basin. Probably most of you already know you have the outlet and every, all the area that is contributing to the outlet, to the stream network, is, is called basin. Then you have each single stream that has a node, okay? And between each single, you have a segment and you have the subcatchment. So these one are very important for let you understand, and this is the main difference between uh, uh, spatial, spatial modeling, hydrological modeling in terms of computation. Whatever is happening over here is strongly influenced what whatever is happening in the upper stream contribution. Okay, usually when you go for different kind of uh, modeling in spatial modeling, what you have? You have a, a tiling system that has just a bit overlapping for some border effect, Okay, and uh, because whatever you have, if you have one point species distribution, okay, or even classification of satellite image, you have one point in one particular point, so you are getting all the environmental variable, the soil, topography, spatial of that point in particular, and also a bit of the surrounding, maybe two, three cell, ten cell around it. So that's why you can go in a regular type system. In the ecological, in the uh, hydrological modeling, is not this the case because your upper part, uh, the influence of in this cell is extremely huge. So you can think in the Nilo, you can take into account what there is happening down in Cairo, up to Ethiopia, and where the, even more where the Nilo is bringing up. So in this context, you can see that you have to build up a tiling system that is able to. Identify if it's the outlet over here, I'm going to get everything it is in the upstream contribution. See, over there is where it really becoming massive the computation because you have to build up a tiling system 
able to include one single basin, the entire basin, as soon as one tile is broken, is broken up, this computation cannot be done because you don't know the other part of the tile. So this was a, a tremendous effort from my side to, to identify a tiling system that was able to include all the entire basin. And over, of course, when you have the overlapping of the computation, you have to also exclude the one that are broken, like this one, for example, broken break, I call it broken base or interrupted base. So this is for the incoming of the computation and for the computation of the flow accumulation, everything. But it's not the case when you do the output, then the output can be tiled like we always use. Okay, but the input needs to be done in such a way that, for example, Tom was showing me, you can see Europe is including one tiles, no problem. But as soon as you go in Africa, you have to do instead. And when you have, why you have to do instead in different tiles? Because we cannot, at so far in the technology, we cannot really ingest the full globe, a 90 meter resolution, and have it in one full shot, boom, no. We need to work in tiles. Uh, probably it's possible, we need to act the grass code and we will see how uh, potential uh, change can be done. Um, in this context, uh, the methodology, the methodological flow after in the middle between the input, between this one is the input and the final output in time can be summarized by this flow chart that you can see also in more details in the publication associated to the talk. So you have the first phase that we compute in time all the flow accumulation for each single tile. Then we overlapping all of them, overlapping all of them, and we have the global flow accumulation over here. Then we recompute again for each single basin, for each single tile, uh, irregular tiles. We recompute the basin, excluding the one that were uh, they were cutted, truncated, and rebuild everything. So there was a lot of building, reassembling, uh, re, re uh, cutting, masking. There was a lot of these operation that were, and you can see over here, removing truncate and then reclassify the basin from one to end. So this was a really tremendous eff effort on doing this. Can I ask you this irregular tiling? Did you do it manually or you had the algorithm to this thing? Uh, I did semi-manual in the sense that I compute a one kilometer resolution at one kilometer, all the basin. Then I extracted the big one. I computed tile for the big one, and then I went manually, let's say, to identify, you know, this one that this was including all the different island or some. So it was partial algorithm and, and partially manually, both of them. Yeah, and in particular, this one are 59 tiles. So I would say alpha. They are automatically like Australia, both easy, or uh, the basic one, uh, the big one are one tiles directly. So that one, but then afterwards, they, you can get it um, automatically, but then you have to do some tuning to have the, the tiles at the degree level, or at, at least, oh sorry, one, di one, di one digit degree level, because as soon you, oops, as soon you have some not rounding into the, the the matrix, the full global matrix, it, it's getting trouble. Yeah. And there are like two thousand <coughs> islands, let's say, in the world. I think two thousand somewhere. Yeah, they are included. Each now, you can, of course, is a separate tiling. Or? Of course, you cannot see. No, no, no. Is it over here? You can see all the tiles, <coughs> all the island inside in this one, another one outside here. You know, this this one they are complete in the ocean. You know, they're including all the islands that are very small, so you can't see over here, but there are. Mm. Yeah. And some of they are including to, to, in some other types, like this one for sure is including all the island around uh, New Zealand and so on. So this one I would say that was the most difficult part because you have to run the algorithm and see what is happening in some uh, some part of some tiles were not working, going back, so you need really a cascading process to check every time. Um, so in the, in the computation, after the computation of the flow accumulation, I was doing, I would say that we, we compute again the different basing and sub-basing sub-catchment, 
and, and then we identify the three main elements, the global flow direction, the flow, the first flow decumulation, global flow direction, global unique basin, global unique stream segment, a global unique subculture. Of course, this kind of tiling system need to be extremely precise in order to have all the computation, <clears throat> all the tiles cutting at the same pixel level because you, you are entering some problem during the tiling system if there is some overlapping between all gap, even between when you're emerging all the basin and so on. So that one was a, a lot of checking if everything was <coughs> done carefully. Um, and here you can see the, uh, an overview of the, of the basin, the macro basin, we call it, and inside of the macro basin, the subcatchment, okay? And inside of the subcatchment, you can see, inside of the basin, you can see the flow accumulation and the stream network derived from the flow accumulation. So uh, this one was the main source of data that later on can be used for, for additional computation. So in terms of validation procedure, of course, we get these beautiful maps, but we need to really check if the real stream is really there or not. So in this context, we, uh, we use it, the NHD plus uh, high resolution. So this is a, a really uh, beautiful and in particular for checking the flow accumulation validation and the stream network validation. The NHG Plus is, um, is a data set computed by uh, United States, USGS, United States, and in particular the high resolution was coming out in the last three, four years, and this 10 meter resolution, the LiDAR derived that uh, with all the stream network and basin delineation and so on, and of course also the flow accumulation computed. Uh, so I use this one as a ground truth because we don't have ground truth for all the globe. So I consider this one due to that is high resolution and there is also a previous version of fault interpretation. So it's a, it's a missing of also fault interpretation effort carry over for several years. Um, I could use it in terms of validation. So then what I did, I, nothing else than plotting make the flow accumulation coming from from the NHG plus high resolution versus my flow accumulation. And you can see that the big amount, the big amount of, uh, of convergence between the two, the two values. So you can see that really the cloud of point density over here. And this one, uh, I, I was using 28 million stream channel. So I was able to, to compute uh, this kind of graph of considering all the surface of the stream network for United States that I would consider is a big quantity compared to, uh, to the full globe. Then, of course, there was also uh, some difference over here. So whatever is coming here and there are the discrepancies between the flow accumulation can be due to different digital elevation models that are producing different results, uh, really flat area where the algorithm is not able to, to calculate properly the flow accumulation. Um, so over here, the, we need to investigate and probably going in a 30 meter resolution in order to avoid these discrepancies with the NHD plus. And also because the NHD plus is also capturing man-made channel. And the main 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 channels are diverged from the flock on the from the main line of flood accumulation. You can if the water is going there, you can take the water and go in diagonal and in one valley. So the, over there, everything is, is going to be different, okay? So these are the areas that are representing these two portions. Um, then we did also a bit of uh, photo, um, visual inspection to understand if really uh, making uh, is a good product or not. So in this graph, it's easy to spot. If you see the red one, the NH plus and the hydroxyl ITB, the pink one, so there is a strong agreement between, especially this one over here, rather you can see that the other global product available are much shorter, so they are not able to detect the, the head water. So over here you can see that the two are coming up very high with the different uh, the hydrography and the merit hydro, rather this one is completely missing the red one. And this one as a, foot, as a visual inspection was really grateful to see, but then we compute from a statistical point of view uh, this kind of graph. So uh, we get the NHG plus, so the concept is this one, 
we, we get energy plus, we buffer it around uh, zero, zero, 100, every 100 meter, 100, 200, 200, 300, 340. And then we overlay the two information and we see how many pixels in terms of percentage are fell between the two, between energy plus hydrography and multimeter <coughs> in the first cell, so where there is the zero, one pixel aside, two pixel aside, three pixel aside. And you can see that between almost 50% of, <coughs> of the stream network has fell in just way with one pixel shift, and the other going a bit further, 200 pixel shift and 300 pixel shift are detected and the other remain 30%. Uh, so we have a sort of overall accuracy of 80% of the pixels are within the 300 meter accuracy. And rather the other kind of, the other vector, global vector, as you can see, they're not able to map in so accurate uh, the stream network. So after the validation, we can go further in the computing uh, so these, the first one they are the one that I was talking before, so base and, uh, base and network layer. So you can see flow accumulation, flow direction, drainage, drainage basin, outlets, depression, string segment, subcatchment are coming from the flow accumulation, the, from the uh, methodological flow that I just described. Then later on, assume you have your basin constraint, and you have all e each single basin, IQ zone, flow accumulation, danger, autolation, depression, and so on, you can compute ad additional layers for identify the different uh, feature of the stream network and also the slope and the catchment around it and how they are uh, distributed and computed. So we have, for example, different kind of stream slope and we have four raster, stream order, six raster, and of course also one vector layer that was including the different stream order, stream distance in terms of 11, 11 uh, layers that you can identify the stream distance going the Euclidean distance, go through the following the water, going upstream, going downstream, so a, a bunch of hydrological network layers that, that can be useful for hydrological modeling in general. Then we have also other flow index like uh, the wetness index also, and of course, all the stream segment property, elevation to, to the highest streams, elevation to the down, downstream, and, and so on for each single computer. So in total, there are 36 layers that have been computed for a total of more or less two terabyte, two terabyte of data. Um, for helping the, the user, and we build up this hydrography 90 meter, um, with um, with a nice video. that summarize the concept in just three minutes, but uh, thanks to Sharp for his effort in, in creating and also for speaking through and explaining this massive data set. Also, we build up the, uh, the OpenGeo app, a sort of OpenGeo app uh, platform to in GeoNode done by where you can, you can go through the uh, GeoNode application and you can <coughs> see the different layer. You can get also for each one, you can get the segment ID, you get all the different layers, you can unselect and select each one of these, and you you can have, so we are getting really, so probably this one you are in the one basin, and you can see now <coughs> the different basin coming up. And you can get the ID, and the ID that you get is used later on to implement it in scripting procedure that we have done for selecting one particular basin that you are interested in with. And all this information is also reported, is also reported in this other hydrography.org site. In particular, where hydrography, we have the tiling system that you can click 
in this one, and you can see each one, you get immediately the link that with a command line wget or, or cool, you can download it directly, this link for each single tile that you have. And of course, over there, you have all the different figure that represented each one of the layer, and you can understand in rapidly what is each layer representing and some name and more description is inside of the publication. So this one should help quite quite the user in able to download this big amount of data. Then we have also some batching um, batch download the scripting procedure in uh, in bash for downloading helping to download everything and also we are building up also python script and we are also building a, a r library grapher for ingesting inside r um, and be able to compute some other in information you didn't export them as coke so put them on the sorry s3 coke on s3 Cloud Duty. Yes, yes, these are all cloud objects. Yes, okay. yes. But so the one tree service, the one that are inside here, they are, uh, they are, you cannot download it. So the one that are for GeoNode are cloud optimized, but the one that you download are without optimization. Okay. Yeah, the one that you download they are without optimization. So can you just open the file in QGIS? Yeah, from here. No, you just have a URL no of not the yet, file. not yet. Okay. Yeah, we are thinking to do it. Yeah, mm -hmm. yeah. So you need to download it. Yeah, you need to download it and open it. Yeah, following the tile system that uh, that we have. Yeah, computation. The the tool. So the drawgraphy 90 meter and the journal. You can see over there the link. That useful. And then in terms of computational process, the funny part that also Tom likes. <laughs> we have 52 bash scripts in cascade, all of them are linked to each other in order to be able to run the first and all of them they run in cascade because I was checking every time I was able to rewrite, every time that I find an error, I was downstreaming the full 52 bash script. But around 40,000 lines of coding um, and this cascading model was implemented under cluster QE system, the SLAR um, uh, uh, queuing system. Uh, each single tile requires 70 gig RAM for each single tile to compute, to be able to ingest the full basin. Of course, the big one, 70, 70 gig, and the small one, a bit more. And so we have 59 irregular tiles and 116 regular tiles that every time you need, I would say, splitting, converge, merging, overlapping, uh, masking, and, and so on. And it was running the HPC server using 12,000 core of computational hours. Uh, the software used were all open source software, in particular GDAL, uh, GDAL for tiling, cropping, mosaic, merging, and image compression, PK tools for masking, create histogram, a lot of for the reclassification of the, of the basin, and, uh, and reclassification analysis. And the geographic information systems was really the engine to, to compute the stream network analysis with all the different R watershed, all the different R stream extract, R stream basin, R stream distance that have been, uh, they have been computed. And so, um, yes, in, in terms of limitation, let's see the limitation of the, this hydrography 90 meter data set. Um, the algorithm that is implementing in GRASS uh, does not allow bifurcation. So in other words, <coughs> you, don't, you, you cannot simulate a river that is going downstream and then is splitting to something that is happening, especially in the super flat area. Uh, sm small headwater, they were not really representing inside because as soon as it's becoming smaller than 90 meters, the stream network is not possible to represent it. So there's really small one like 20 centimeter large until they were inside to the 90 meters. So for us, it was just one pixel. So that, that one, the beauty of, will be possible to go inside to the 30 meter resolution. But over there, we will find some other problem that for sure they will arise. Um, the presence of a stream, pay attention, does not, does not mean there is a water. We are just mapping the street. We don't know how many cars are there. So in the same concept is that we know where it is the stream network, but we don't know if there is going to be, if there is water and when in the time 
is going to be water. And um, in, in extremely flat area, the, the water, not always we have the stream network completely goes where, where the, even if, if the merit hydro has been um, carved by the stream, net, by open street map, they also uh, with ancillary data where the, the river are, but there are still problems over there in super flat area, like in the Congo River basin, uh, even some, some place in the north of Italy. Um, so over there, we need some kind of adjustment and understanding better the, uh, the algorithm. Uh, next step, how the product can be improved. And this is something that I was mentioning to you, to you yesterday, uh, Tom. So each single size has to have, up to now, two billion cells. So cannot be more in order to be ingested in the 64 giga inside to the 8 into 32 uh, data, uh, data stream length. Uh, so we need to modify. So I would probably I will get asked from the from the grass people, uh, Marcus Metz to increase, yeah, Marcus Metz to increase the over here, the, the, because over here you can do it in the RAM. You can do more, but it's in the sedimentation, so it's going to the hard disk. And when you launch it into the hard disk mode, you have too much IO, so it's, 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 you cannot compute it so far as it is now. Probably later on uh, can be adjustable. Uh, correct and improve it. Um, bifurcation, as I mentioned before. Uh, so, um, as we mentioned, we don't, we didn't map the map the water presence. So we need to shorten the the, the the stream network where there is water and thresholding if the discharge is bigger than zero. Okay. So over there we will see. Okay, because now we have streams network mm -hmm. also in the Sahara where there is no water. Because again, we are marking, we are marking only the channel. Uh, using the 30 meter, like the Copernicus Dam, glow 30. But over here, we will have a big problem because the stream network will follow just the road because it's super flat surface. So over there, we need to understand how it's going to perform in the 30 meter resolution. Uh, we are building a hydrographer, uh, our library to be able to ingest and be able to uh, let the people in R be able to use it, but good luck in, in, in ingesting all the globe because it's very heavy. So, uh, and also to process later on. So, uh, I use R only for the plotting procedure because I could not do anything with this, this kind of data. Because there are in, 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 in R library for the stream network <coughs> delineation. But as soon as you go bigger than Europe, or they crash. Even Europe probably is, is a problem. So it's really for small scale analysis. Um, and now we are in the process of modeling global discharge for each single stream network and be able to later on pruning down where water is bigger than zero. So we will have a shortness of stream network in, the, in the, all the desert area in, in dry <laughs> So such a data set can be, uh, can be useful, uh, as you can think about fresh water, uh, fresh water flow and sediment transportation, uh, pollutant and nutrient concentration, different kind of biodiversity application, public health uh, that we are talking uh, with different uh, experts in this area, geopolitical resource <coughs> challenges like tran transboundary rights, all conflict there are, you can imagine between Ethiopia, Eritrea, so Somalia for all the Nilo upper stream contribution area, uh, water security, water rescue management, uh, food production also because it could be for agricultural implementation and also United Nations, um, the, the, all the United Nations and mainly the water one uh, for the development goals. So we, we are strongly active with our group also in knowledge transfer, and every year we, 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 um, we organize a summer school very similar and, uh, to the one that is organized uh, Tom, and I also participated over here two years ago. But now we, we understood that we need also to, to enlarge the, um, the, 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 time for the, the time of processing for the brain of the students, that is very important. So we expanded the, in, uh, the, the one week summer course in a two months online training with six hours every week 
twice per week, and we have a final two weeks in person hackathon. And uh, we are organizing April, May, and June the, the <coughs> hackathon for 2023. You can see uh, registration at spatialecology.net. They should be up, uh, maybe it's already up. Yes. Not yet, but a uh, couple of hours. Couple of hours. Yeah, thanks. Uh, so we have a bit of time for clarification. And if you have, want more uh, details, you can check the paper over here. Uh, yeah, so I will be here. Yes, please. Thank you uh, for your presentation. Um, I have a question about the, because um, you have, you have an accumulation model, so the accumulation. What is the precipitation input you use? And also, um, did you use a runoff coefficient of one, just no, no infiltration? Or? Yeah, so flow accumulation, flow accumulation is just uh, so we are detecting stream natural mm -hmm. just based on the depth. Okay, so flow accumulation is just upper stream contribution area. So no infiltration, so we are not checking water quantity. Mm -hmm. Okay, so that one is going to be later on when we, we work with the modeling monthly global discharge, that is something that we are carrying over, and we are accumulating using the same flow accumulation stream depth. That's why I need the tiles and so on for accumulating down, again, for simulating this kind of um, um, contribution area, what is happening in the outlet. So we are accumulating down, and this is the, the, the massive data process, because here, if you take the precipitation here, you, it's wrong. You have to take the precipitation that is up in the upper stream. And it's the same for temperature, water melt, soil contribution, soil uh, absorption, soil filtration. So the, the, the work is, is it, it's massive data production. So rather species distribution, you take the same pixel. So this is the difference where it's really becoming extremely computational challenging to model the outlet, what is happening in, in everything, even what is happening for the fish. PC distribution modeling in fresh water, you need to do temperature in the upstream. And uh, yes, and water and water quantity and sediment transportation is all similar. So the, this is where the, we but need the, to figure you, out a better way. You only use a DTM as an input. This one is only DTM. Only DTM. Only DTM. Only DTM. Yeah. Later on, we, we are processed for the water discharge. We will do flowing index infiltration and so on. Do you already have an idea what data set you will use to um, represent the infiltration, for example, like what soil surfaces? Tom, tom, tom data. <laughs> <laughs> so I processed already all the tom data. <clears throat> so we have all the terra, terra climate, that is a, is a climate model, more for hydrological assessment, uh, accumulated downstream for each single month, so for the last 40 years. Then we have all the soil from tom, um, I computed also um, different vegetation index and water stress uh, stuff. Um, uh, water moisture, some data set water moisture from, uh, also you have water moisture, I think. Uh, from MODIS, maybe you have more water moisture? No. Um, uh, what else? And then also for um, water quality, we have all the urban land, land crop accumulate, all the land crop accumulate downstream, livestock also. So it's, it, it's, it's a lot of data that we are preparing for the water quantity and the, for the water quality mm -hmm. with the same principle, yeah. yeah. And uh, why not use the white box tools? Because it could be that it's, uh, um, it would avoid some problems because it, they, it overlaps a lot. I mean, it, what you can derive, it, it actually it has more more uh, things in wild box tools than classic. But not really, all the stream properties, from the, from I, don't, the, I don't think so. For the, think so. okay. All the stream properties. But have you tried the, using wild box tools? Yeah, I did, I did, I did it a bit, them. I played a few years ago, but all the stream network, um, uh, stream, yes, all the stream segment, uh, sorry, all this one, <clears throat> yes, all this one, same distance, same distance, segment properties. These one are really the hardcore bone of grass. That white box, I don't think they has all of that. You can do a flow accumulation, you can do basin delineation, stream the main one, no problem. But as soon as you go over here, you, you have difference. The problem is 
if you do flow accumulation or flow direction with one software and you try to do the other one with this one, you have failed in the code. They are non compatible, so they, they, they need to be really software so dependent. Fresh. Yes, you have to have that. That's why the cascading more than having only one software doing everything. Because if you start to change software, you I try even reach them from from the guy from Richard Brown. Brown, Brown. Yeah, Richard, the same. He's not, he's not really ready. Um, he has a flow accumulation that has is stopping depression. I don't know, I, I will <clears> try to contact him. Uh, so there is something there, but they are not really compatible between the between the grass and within grass. Let's say. And as it has a global service, uh, the 30 meter, I think. Or yeah, as it has a dam, you know, as a dam for 30 meters. They also have all the catchments and yes. um, the catchment area and basins and things. Have you compared it with? No, we compare it with everything with the most available NHD plus. That is so far the best one. So that one is our ground through comparison. Yeah. Okay. Yeah. Questions online? Yeah, there are two questions online. Yeah. No, oh, there are three questions online. So first, may the slides be available with reference? Yeah, of course. Yes, yeah, so of course. I will. Um, I will share it. I will, um, and then you can access the R package page. I'm not sure which one. Uh, this one is a GitHub is a GitHub page. Uh, it's still in working process, but it should be available. Maybe I make a mistake. Uh, maybe it, it posted my. <coughs> yeah. yeah. So, hydrographer. Yes, this one. And I will share it. I will share it also the GitHub. I will double check if this the GitHub is correct. I should be correct. I could be paste the link. Um, and then another one. Do you think it's useful to have local recalibration areas that cover small subcatchments? There's an ASL lighter based ETM. Uh, yes. Yeah, so, so this is thanks for the for the <coughs> question. This is uh, something that we are we are working on it and try to think how we can because especially headwater, uh, the big river are fine. The big river are. I mean, when I say big river, even um, let's say four or five meter wide, four or five meter wide, they are really spot in the same location. Also, because they've been using stream network, uh, open street map to carve in the dam, and also satellite image. So, as soon as you have the information from the satellite, the river really goes inside to the our stream network, really goes inside. And it's also making meandry form, and it's very beautiful too. To look around how it's performing, so we we are working try to understand if the upper stream contribution area can be mapped well with high resolution light data. Oh, I mean, theoretical yes, but you should be able to have a big lighter coverage all over the world for be able to have a standardized product or uh, or using lidar or 30 meter in the upper stream contribution or even 10 meters. So. It's something that can be done, but will take a while and a few years to complete this steps. But the user can do, I mean, he get one basin, he get all the layer for that basin, and then he can cross it with local digital revision model and improve the, uh, the accuracy. Okay, another question, how much time computation has been spent to run the whole workflow? Okay, so the nice, uh, there are the, the hours over there, but in few words, the, the full workflow in the in the parallel in the queuing system, it was running two weeks um, in the in the multi-core computation. So running <coughs> like um, 60 between 60 and eight uh, between 60 yes and 150 tiles at the time in parallel in the high performance computing. So in two weeks and actually. We were running these two weeks several times in order to be to be able to catch for potential errors and so on. But something that has been really tremendous important for this kind of work that was not happening before is really the tiling system. And every time that you crop one data set, need to be really at degree level. So in the, the typical 0 0.008333, 
cannot be extremely long. So R that is always cutting after how many digit eight, you cannot use it in such a world. When you re reassembling everything, then the matrix is so huge, the, the global matrix is so huge that you have one pixel shift in Australia. And then of course that pixel shift is not is breaking up all the reassembling of the tiling system. This one in the global implementation of not <coughs> tight uh, forest map, you don't never see, you don't notice. But as soon you have the basin, you have this one pixel shift, and then you have one basin that is not attached to the other one. So this precise in tiling system need to be, you need to really be picky in order to be able to reassemble everything. Um, yeah, that's okay. So okay. I have also a question. Yeah, please. Uh, so you mentioned that now the bifurcation is not supported. So I'm wondering then how are you currently mapping, for example, the Netherlands, where the rhyme is actually splitting into several sub. Over there they go straight. Mm -hmm. Yeah, the, the, the stream network goes straight. So if there is a bifurcation that after a while is getting again, union again, it's not a big issue because maybe it's a big of one to uh, one two kilometer. Uh, but is, there are some places in, in, the, in, in Africa and Congo that are becoming two completely irreverse. That they go hey, over there is, is wrong. Over there there is some some stream network that is not correctly mapped. Um, we need to work with this one probably. Uh, the, the problem is that the bifurcation really happen in the extremely flat area. So probably you will not be able to solve it, even if you have the algorithm, because you need to say, okay, where is the bifurcation is happening? Because by the time we will not be able to, to detect. So probably you need a kind of satellite input to say, okay, I can see the bifurcation over here in this point by the satellite from water occurrence. So let's start to split it over here. So you need a sort of forcing to <coughs> split it in this point. So it's something that you need to address it better. In many big countries like United States, Australia, and Europe, you have a better uh, terrain model than many. The yes, the of course. Years. Yeah. But did you consider maybe replacing all in this? No, not really, because if not, we don't have a constant protocol all over the globe. So we will have some country with a better digitalization model, and some other no. So I, I would I prefer to have one product that has a constant accuracy everywhere in, in, in pixel size and not any <coughs> patches and so on. Now the 30 meter, the glow, glow, glow 30, Copernicus glow 30 is ready. I, there are a few countries missing, I think, too. Or no, something. it's complete. It's complete. But there's some, there's some, <coughs> some areas area that are not allowed to share. Perfect. Some areas that are not allowed to share. Yeah. Um, and uh, we but can the go Japan for the... But the 30 yeah. it's about the same quality and it's yeah. uh, everything that's very so yes, but over there we need to to solve the problem with the with the RAM limitation in grass and in enlarging the because the matter become nine times bigger, nine times bigger. So over there we need to do something. Yeah. Any other question? I'm actually surprised it's only uh, fifteen thousand CPU hours for everything. Yeah, but running several times, several, several, several times. Because every time you know you have one pixel chip, you go back and roll and it is up and down. So this one is for one run. These hours is just for one run. We did see uh, still artifacts, by the way. Sorry? We still see artifacts in the, some areas. And missing, yeah. missing things, you know, like. There are schools. In, in what, sorry? Uh, we saw missing, like, there's a pool, be like, uh, looks like a lake or something, but the missing data. Okay, well, in the lakes. In the lakes, also the lakes is, is, is the stream go to the lakes, mm -hmm. the network. So the one probably you will see in the open hall was not loaded, or it was the representation of the stream that goes inside to the lake. So over there is another step that can be done by, and we didn't do it because there are different lakes um, data set. So we could have masked or integrated out the data set. But it's better that each single user integrate his own or the one that is select lakes data set and having a stream lake, stream lake data set. Yeah. 
So it's something that can be done in according to the uh, user request. Yeah. Yes, but so related to the visualization <coughs> problem that Lenny uh, was mentioning. So, so far, considering the quality of the data, we would not recommend it to use, for example, in uh, river deltas or areas like that. Yes, okay, also river delta. Over there, the river delta gets split in several. For us, it's just one line goes through, mm -hmm. through the sea. Okay, so um, you, you are always to consider the stream network as far mm -hmm. as is considered in the hydrological domain is a is a skeleton representation of the water body okay so even river bigger than uh, amazon 20k is represented by one line okay so there are different data sets they have water occurrence uh, the so-called grow uh, data set that can be overimposed over there but our main reason for the stream network is also for calculating the discharge okay and the discharge is also influenced by the surface water of the one of the, so we are integrating also the surface water among the uh, the other data set that I mentioned before for the discharge <coughs> model yeah. um, yes this this kind of data set of course for um, developed country Europe United States Australia and Zilla Probably I'm not bringing so much more information because they have their own system. But for you know, for developing country, uh, especially the stream network and later on the discharge will be a big contribution. So are the ones that are really benefit from this kind of data set. Yeah. Please. Uh, I'm not a hydrologist, so this might be a stupid question. No problem. So which year can this data set represent? Ah, good, good point. So the stream network, we suppose that the stream don't move and is, is, has been derived by the, the digital elevation model and they married them in 2017 but has been reconstructed based on SRTM. The RTM is what, beginning of 2000, something like 2001. that? 2001. 2001, yeah. So is the digital elevation model representation of 2001. But you can consider that I mean, river they move, but not so much. You know, there is an internal flotation inside to the same bed bed frame, okay? <coughs> and then there are some rivers they really change direction from time. But we can consider that are quite static. The, at, at least the stream channel is there, the valley is there. You know? yeah. Good point. And uh, if I want to apply the status app to the whole China in R, so it, it won't work. I will crash. Uh, okay. Yeah. The ingestion will crash, yes. Okay. Thank yeah. Try, try. I'm curious. Yeah. <laughs> yeah. If not grass, grass, everything is compatible compatible with grass. Yeah. And we are releasing scripting pro procedure to uh, to be able to ingest the data inside grass. And they actually the the library that is is, is building up a grower. I go there. Um, no, hydrographer. <laughs> hydrographer is uh, is the the backbone is grass is grass. Then there is the interface in R. Okay, so whenever is uh, doing some some kind of analysis, hydrological analysis, grass is doing and R is just receiving the output, ingesting. So they are doing this kind of part. Yes, good point. Maybe to follow up on that, is there a way to only access like this particular uh, maybe subtitles? Uh, so, for example, I know that in the stars package, it is possible to load only like a subset of a tip. So then maybe that would help load the data. Yeah, perfect. So also in that one, yes, you can specify that our procedure get tile ID that allow you to to get a tile, which one is your tile, for example. Uh, of your point location in black log, and then you can download only that tiles. And there are also some other commands that download. Uh, you can imagine if you have a, 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 uh, an area that is downloading more tiles, so it's downloading all the four, five, six tiles, and even is able to mask out the ID of the basic that you are not interested in. So, and, and this is the stuff that are is calling grass or is calling even GDAL and PK tools to do the, the crunching that <coughs> you can do 
crunch, your data crunching, and then in R you have already your uh, study area that has been cleaned and beautiful to, to be ready to do some analysis. Yeah. And uh, may I ask you the, when you uh, you had the paper published and uh, what 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 was the like the main concerns if they had concerns was it for example that today you have the 30 meter DPM you know it's publicly available it's, let's say open data but you computed with a okay when we start uh, when we start three years ago you know two years ago okay. there was not the 30 meter was still in process mm. and so on. Uh, so they, they, they were not really uh, some review, and there are open access to the review, so feel free to read. Uh, the main review, they were concerned about the so-called upstream contribution. In other words, where uh, the river started. So, um, so over here, this is the starting of the river. Can you see? No. Mm -hmm. the point. Yeah, there is a point, but I'm not sure. If okay. Answer. Okay. So, so that one over here is the starting of the port, the stream river. So in our case, we map it at 0 0.05 kilometer square. Everybody in our other stream network, they were mapping at one or five kilometers. So we went up really a lot in the upstream contribution. Of course, this is produced a longer stream that. The, in, uh, in dry country is not the case. But again, we are mapping the channel. We're not mapping if there is water or not. So this one was the main constraint that we are overestimating the stream network. But we knew, and it's something that is going to happen later on by cutting if from here to <coughs> up there is no water. So this stream network is going to be cut over here. So the stream will start from here. And this is going to be a dynamic uh, representation of the stream network. So the idea is to have one one stream network that is getting longer, a short in according to the month. So in winter months over here is going to be longer rather than summer it's going to be shorter. So this is where we want to arrive. Good point. But the 30 meter resolution, yeah, we're not because there, they also because there was not hydrological hydrological correct the 30 meter dam. Tau then come out like maybe last one. Fab, Fab, then. Fab then, sorry. Fab then come out last one year ago, so yeah, the paper was already in review. Mm -hmm. But uh, yeah, there is plenty of. And now you have a 10 meter resolution map of all the water bodies of the world by two organizations that map the whole world at 10 meters. Yeah, as a water, water so, so in the 10 meter, you could actually validate the state. Perfect, and, as a water, uh, sentinel uh, base, yeah. Yes. Water cooler. And you looked at the 10 meters? As no, one. that one, no, we have this one is, is crossed with the 30 meter. Um, 10 meter, I didn't do it, but this one, uh, the flow accumulation. With 10 meter, you also get like really narrow streams, you know, really. Yeah, uh, yeah, of course. Creeks. Something that I can check. This one is <coughs> 30 meter resolution, this gravel. But the 10 bit, yeah, maybe you can send me the link, this one. I was not aware of this. Yeah, yeah about, about the, the surface water, it's a bit tricky because you, you cannot always see the water, right? So Forest. The Amazon really Perfect. It's basically, you can't see the water. So I, I, was, I was wondering, how you were planning to implement the, the, the water discard, so in the modeling perspective? Because, of course, you can integrate always with some satellite data, but... Uh, you catch a point. Also, <laughs> you catch a good point. Mm -hmm. And actually, I have to say this true, that the water occurrence, I, down, I accumulate downstream uh, by counting the surface in the downstream co contribution area. But I don't, due to this, there are some areas that are completely covered, so there will be no water as a water occurrence, but they are. Um, so over there, I think the, the real game player will be precipitation. So the precipitation is going to influence it much more in the, in, in the calculation, in the modeling technique. Yeah. <coughs> yeah. 
have one uh, oh, yeah. futuristic question. <coughs> so since the input is only the DEM, could it also be possible to map the hydrography also of Mars, not just of Earth? Ah, yes. And we've been asked this question before. <laughs> nice, yes. And in particular, there was actually the, there was one German guy that came to the summer school that he was developing up. Because from Mars, there are many, many photos, but they are not in stereo. So he was de developing, uh, he, he did, uh, maybe he's already published or not, the nice scripting procedure to derive them based on neural network by only one picture, based on the shadow, knowing the shadow and the angle of the, of the photo and be able to derive the dam. So when he, he will be finished the full dam, maybe it can be done in four months. <laughs> if, if you're interested, there's a group at Imperial College London that's doing uh, that's looking into you know, mapping models. Yeah, yeah. All this technique of uh, well, still network, no, but all the geomorphology layers, so aspect slope and so on, and they are uh, very well used also in bathymetry, <laughs> so the digital vision model of the of the ocean. So you can calculate the same aspect slope, and over there there are mountains, and so then then they, of course they influence the the currents and also the, the species that are living there. So they, they've been using, they're actually, one person was asking me the algorithm to compute for the bathymetry or the geomorphometry layers, yeah. Simply the, the course registration is open. Okay, thanks, Tushar. So the course registration is open. So if, if you want to have more information, go to spatialecology.net and you will see the, the the information. Thanks a lot. Okay, thank you very much.